everybody is talking about the Barbie movie. And in my world, that means that everybody is talking about kink. Specifically, two fetishes, dollification and bimbofication. Now, at first glance, these two terms seem interchangeable, but really, dollification and bimbofication can be pretty different. There is a little overlap, though, especially when we're talking about Barbie. So, come on, we're going for a ride. Hop in my dream car. First stop is dollification land, and after that, we'll head down to Bimbosville. Zipper Magazine. I'm Sunny Megatron clinical sexologist, certified sexuality and kink educator, and editor-in-chief of the kink education-focused Zipper magazine. In kink and BDSM, dollification describes a role-play scenario involving dressing up as a human doll and being played with. The person who gets dressed up is the doll, and the person doing that dressing up and or controlling the doll is the doll maker. Maker, for short. Most of the time, this role play is played out as a power exchange, meaning it's a dom sub thing. And most commonly, the doll is the submissive and the maker is the dominant, but that's not the only way. Some prefer that the doll be the dominant who instructs their submissive maker to dress them and control them according to their very specific and precise instructions. I gotta break in here with a kink caveat. As always, anything that I talk about that's in the context of kink and BDSM means that it's consensual. Limits and desires are discussed, safe words are used, aftercare is planned, the whole nine yards. Dollification is an incredibly diverse kink with infinite possibilities. Through costumes, makeup, behaviors, mannerisms, you can become any kind of doll that you can imagine. A floppy rag doll, a stringed marionette, an articulated, posable doll, like a Bratz doll, or Barbie or Ken. You can be a porcelain collectible doll, a G.I. Joe, a grown-up kind of blow-up doll, a stuffed animal, a Pinocchio, even Chucky. You might choose to play a doll that's completely inanimate, so your maker has to pose you for every single position change. Maybe you're a doll that's equipped with animated function, so when your maker twists certain knobs or presses special buttons, you say a pre-programmed phrase or repeat a certain movement. For some, Their dollification play crosses over into robot fetish, which is a whole nother realm. In fact, it can be so complicated and nuanced, it really should be a whole nother video. And if you're like, but Sunny Megatron, I need to know about robot fetish right now, then head to the internet and seek out educational material using search terms like technosexuality, robot sexuals, or the ASFR community, which stands for Alt Sex Fetish Robots. But now that we've gone down this road, what might a dollification scene with a robot fetish twist look like? Let's say as a doll, you're an android and you're being trained with AI data to perform a very limited and specialized set of human-like actions. And you're being programmed by your dominant robotics engineer. Or maybe, maybe it's a whole team. You know, electromechanical technicians and data scientists. Oh, we got a, a UX designer or two, you know, all working in tandem, overheating your gears and, and, and melting all of your circuitry. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll hit the futuristic city of Robotopolis on a different fetish road trip. Back to dollification. It's important to remember that dollification isn't always a sex thing. Just like many kinks, some choose to make hanky panky a part of their play and some don't. It's not required. For some, dollification can just be about shutting off your brain, not having to be responsible for anything, and enjoying the novelty and whimsy of being someone or something else for just a little while. 
For others, it could be about the transformation, the process of getting dressed up, having your hair and makeup done, and being made to feel more beautiful than maybe you've ever felt before. Dollification can take on so many different flavors, whether you incorporate eroticism into it or not. It could be about being cared for, being the most prized, precious, treasured, valuable object that your doll maker owns. Or it could take on the flavor of being used, consensually treated like you have little to no value, because after all, you're just an object. This kind of consensual passive objectification can be appealing for lots of different reasons. Some revel in the fact that they are being relieved of all decision-making, everything, even down to whether and when they can move or talk. A lot of people-pleasers enjoy that it lets them off the hook. They get to relax, surrender, and just receive. To experience what it feels like to be cared for and wanted without the distraction of figuring out how to respond or reciprocate. Dollification pairs well with so many other kinks too. A few of the most common, but definitely not the only ones, dronification, hypnoplay, latex or rubber fetish, sensation play, tickling, humiliation, CNC, encouraged feminization, cross-dressing, sissification, and gender bending, service, praise kink, fear play, MS or owner property dynamic, bondage, and don't forget mental bondage, which is definitely a thing. Rather than being restrained with ropes or cuffs, you're doing it with commands, obedience, and self-control. But out of all of the kinks out there, there's one that is the foundation of most doll play, and that is consensual objectification, but not just any kind, specifically dehumanization. This means that the person playing the doll is being consensually objectified in a way that removes their personhood. In this fantasy role play, they're a thing, an object. They have no feelings, no thoughts, and no sentience. They are just a doll that exists for somebody else's enjoyment. This type of objectification or dehumanization can also fall into what's called erotic anthropomorphism. In other words, assigning human traits and attributes to things that aren't human. Which I know in the case of dollification is a little bit of a roundabout because you are human, but in the role play, you're pretending you're not human, but then the maker who is human is assigning you human attributes because you're not human, but really the, like the you, you is human, just like the fantasy you isn't human. I know it's confusing, but also it is really hot. Some other kinks and fetishes that often incorporate themes of erotic anthropomorphism are pet play, robot fetish, or human furniture. There's one important thing that I want you to keep in mind. None of these definitions are the end-all be-all. So when I take all of doll play and lump it all together, these are the characteristics or trends that are most common that I'm telling you about. But What dollification does or does not include on an individual level is as infinite as your imagination. And that goes for all of the other kinks too. We all define roles and labels differently. We have different desires and limits and creative imaginations. As I frequently say, kink is customizable. The only rules that you have to follow are those that are related to consent. All of the other rules and details, you and your partners get to design them together in a way that satisfies everyone's needs, respects everyone's limits, and feels good. So that's dollification in a nutshell. But what about bimbofication? They seem like they'd be kind of similar, right? Well. Yeah, but also at the same time, no, not at all. And then when you factor in the kink is customizable part, that means there is no concrete definitive answer to that question. It depends on who you ask and how they play or identify. But just like everything in kink, bimbofication 
is quite nuanced. So up next, we are headed for the superficial, plastic, sparkly, pink world of bimbofication in part two of this dollification versus bimbofication series. And be prepared because you are in for a ride. You'll also learn how and why Barbie is the glue that connects dollification kink, bimbofication kink, and an entire mainstream Gen Z subculture and social movement together. Head to the link below for the second video on bimbofication, and I'll be waiting for you there. Oh, and by the way, you might want to take a detour through Zipper Magazine's YouTube channel and website where you will find more educational content about dollification and bimbofication too. See you soon. Real kink for real people. Brought to you by Sunny Megatron and Clips for Sale.